And I was actually subscribed to James Summerton when this came out and I unsubscribed. I was one of the people that we will see that has abandoned ship. Oh, let's get into this. Okay, hello everyone and welcome again. So we are going to now look at the H Bomber guy situation. I'm going to cover what happened and talk about the kind of aftermath because I think that's really interesting. It has sent ripples um, into the entirety of, of YouTube, let alone just left tube, bread tube, as many of us call it. So uh, yeah, you're watching Matriarch Type, Matriarch Type Live if you're catching the live show or clipped segments. This will definitely be a clipped segment uh, during the later week. Without further ado, let's get into what happened with H-Bomber Guy. So I'm sure many of you will have seen, um, but it's so much like it's got so much media coverage that I even saw it when I was looking at uh, getting news clips ready for the week. I even saw it in Pink News. So I'm going to give a bit, a bit of a basic lowdown and then I'm going to going to basically look at some of the aftermath. So this is absolutely wild. So this in the goddess section, we cover the Internet's latest. So everything from Colin Ballinger to I mean, what, uh, Russell Brand, you know, so we cover everything that's happening. Many of you would have probably seen what happened, but for, in case you don't know, I'm going to give a general explanation to the situation at hand. So James Summerton, as we can see here, probably the least flattering photo that uh, Pink, Pink News could have found, and quite rightly. He were, was, I'm going to say was, um, a queer content creator that worked uh, mostly in kind of leftist circles. And he did a lot of essays about the kind of uh, specifically even within LGBT cultures, like the gay scene. Um, as I imagine the gay male himself, I think he confessed that, um, like, a, you know, talked about that openly. Um, he talked, he gave kind of a platform to predominantly, especially at the beginning of his channel, um, kind of the gay scene specifically. And then as he grew in popularity, which we'll, we'll try and find later the specific moment, um, he, he basically opened that out to kind of speak for everyone to um yeah the detriment of his career basically and also i watched a jesse gender video i don't have it here right now unfortunately so i'm just kind of paraphrasing but what jesse gender said was as well like a lot of um there was a kind of discussion they had about james summerton wanting to be on nebula and being kind of stumped from that right now we know why at the time james summerton also said like i want to be on a uh, nebula giving more uh, voices to queer creators which nebula hasn't yet you know done which was quite insulting to all of the queer creators already on Nebula, uh, like Jesse Gender uh, themselves, who who was kind of like, well, we're here representing our community. Like, we don't need you to do that for us. Thank you, though, kind of thing. So there was already a lot of controversy. The plagiarism discussions have been brought up a lot in the past with James Summerton, but he was able to kind of put up his gay defense shield and say, how dare you come for me um, and the gays when, um, you know, I'm just a creator out here doing the most so anyway let's read the pink news article then we're going to look at some of the other stuff that i found um but so basically what happened was h bomber guy very popular like three million subscriber popular leftist creator only releases like one video every six months and he just dropped this four hour video completely breaking down everything that happened um not only james summerton illuminati as well which was kind of like the the Amuse Bush before the main James Summerton conversation and a whole like hours dedicated to Illuminati. So anyway, for now, let's focus on James Summerton situation. So in Pink News, the article reads, James Summerton, what has the queer YouTuber been accused of by H-Bomber Guy? Uh, an article by Amelia Hansford on the 6th of December in Pink News writes, queer content creator James Summerton has become the focus of a controversial raging internet uh, raging across the internet but what has he been accused of by fellow lgbtq plus creator h bomber guy now relevant to this it should be stated that h bomber guy is openly bisexual as well because i i want the the defense of him being like attacked as a gay creator to kind of be taken off of this because i think that's not really quite fair here really he's being criticized for his complete clear plagiarization Gay YouTube star Summerton, known for creating long form content on uncomfortable things like social unrest, queer theory, and anime, seemingly disappeared from social media after it was alleged that a number of his videos used stolen content. Accusations against Summerton made, uh, came to light after British politician, political YouTuber Harris Brewer, better known as H Bomber Guy, 
claimed he had plagiarized content from queer writers and content creators for several years. Now, it wasn't just Hate Bomber Guy. Someone else came out of the uh, conversation as well. Uh, in a video lasting close to four hours, published on Sunday the 3rd of December, Hate Bomber Guy claimed that at least 26 videos from Summerton's YouTube library include including private and deleted content, used other queer creators' work in some capacity. Now, obviously, we're not going to watch the video, but one thing I really wanted to point out, which is really incredible about how H Bomber Guy did this, is that in the internet, most things aren't deleted forever or in perpetuity, right? But there is an extent of, like, to catch things happening live, tweets can be deleted, videos can even be deleted. <clears throat> accounts can be deleted which that will become relevant later um but so what was really fascinating about h bomber guy's video is that he had clips and snippets and freeze frames and screen grabs from things that had already happened and been deleted so that he could quite clearly post both up simultaneously and say this was what he said before and this is what he said after look at the difference therefore we know he's lying you know and and that was something that really from a investigative journalist point of view was amazing like it's it it really shows that hbomma guy is putting in the work and considering his monthly patron budget we love to see it it's something insane like a lot but um it's clearly well deserved i mean james summerton I've watched some of his stuff. I wasn't a huge fan. I didn't really like his tone and how he spoke in videos. It was a lot of like, and we can see that Disney never really was a fan of the games. It was like a lot of that. Like, But what H. Bomber did was clearly plan this out over a long period of time to do it justice. And I think that really comes across in the video and that's why it's so popular because it's not just a cheap internet drama throwaway. Like this happened. It's like, no pragmatically this is the story this is the lie this is the situation this is what we should do you know i really and i really appreciate that honestly this clip here when he it like first says about it being about uh, james summerton i didn't know that this was happening and i wasn't in i wasn't into uh, james summerton enough to know when he literally said james summerton i like fully gasped i literally was watching i was like like, it was so funny it was like no one saw i was alone in my house but it was tea so how many views have we racked up 7.5 million views i mean that is a culturally important moment and he just completely annihilates the people he's talking about but does it justice because he does genuinely come with receipts and like conversation but he wasn't the only one so someone that was in cahoots with uh h bomber guy uh was again we're just giving away all the goods here uh, was another video that came out by Todd in the Shadows, who I haven't subscribed to. I'm going to watch a, a bit more of their stuff before I kind of subscribe, but I think obviously they're on the side of, of leftist tube. I probably will subscribe to them. But this was another nearly two hour video that didn't really go so much into the, um, the plagiarism side, but it went more into the just generally the negligence and the lack of good information and how most of what James Summerson said was garbage anyway and like incorrect facts in history and like numbers were wrong um misinformation and and then just some kind of misogyny against white women um just kind of sprinkled in and this came the next day I think this was released yeah three days ago so three days later and this again in itself has racked up 1.3 million views so good for good for Todd in the shadows um but this coming as like a second blow was powerful stuff it really was really really was um and i was actually subscribed to james summerton when this came out and i unsubscribed i was one of the people that we will see that has abandoned ship so speaking of that let's look at james channel now because i'm sure you'd be lovely really wanting to know how that's going well not soon oh, not soon after the uh stuff happened did James Summerton turn off comments? And that was one of the first things we saw. And I didn't take a screen grab because this happened before I could get ready for the stream. But um, James Summerton originally turned off comments um, of like posts, videos and stuff. Subsequent to that, and we will look at when, 
we will look at when. This was me getting ready for the stream. I noticed this. James Summerton has also removed all videos from his channel. Which I'm going to come with my opinion as to what I think should happen, really. Because I think if you get to that point, you should delete your channel. Person, per, my, my personal opinion. If I was as distraught as James and I was going through this stuff, I would personally delete my channel and, and change my life. Try and do uh, out, like, like uh, change the wrongdoings I'd done. And we'll talk about more about that in a second. But so, no picture. 2,000, no, 266,000 subscribers left. And we're going to talk about how many have jumped shit later on in the stream. But um, so this is the current situation. There's nothing there. There used to be videos, even some comment community posts, but they were all had their comments removed until a couple of days ago. Okay. Now, let's look at patron. So James Summerton had a very good uh, patron group and selection. But and and we will see one of the posts that I found a screenshot of. But look, even Googling James Summerton or searching game James Summerton in patron nothing comes up he's deleted his patron account um which is a lot it is a huge admission of what has happened and so we can see that here okay so this was a screenshot that i found from someone on the h bomber guy oh i think it was the james summerton uh reddit page so before we actually read the original post what i want to point our attention to is another post from someone <laughs> stool for time now you know why we have the tea emoji because sometimes we take it to pet university to quote swoop and we spill the tea okay i know like i know we'll go from like heavy political stuff and stuff like that but like oh so i'm here for this this is culturally relevant though because i'll explain my opinion on the effect on youtube and and left tube specifically afterwards but um i think this is very important to cover so originally after this first happened someone called john you uh, Yuster, Yuster, posted the first comment that James Summerton said to the patron fandom okay now bear in mind some of these plagiarism allegations have been put out there before he's commented on some of them in the live stream which you can see in H Bomber Guy's video but what um he first said was this okay so John John Eustace whole comment reads considering this was your initial immediate response I can understand why you don't think they are fair see so originally James uh, I don't know if you can see it in the thing. Yeah, James posted patron post the 2nd of December 2024, now deleted, said, Firstly, I would like to thank all of you for supporting me in the first place. However, it seems as this, as if this channel has come under target from a significantly larger creator than myself and Nick. Nick is his co-writer, who he throws under the bus the whole time. I know the majority of you were around last year when these accusations were first brought up. Okay, so these, they've been around for a year, at least. Um, I have spoken to many of you privately and in live streams to explain the situation in detail. I am shocked to see that I was worth seemingly, seemingly two hours of a four-hour video, especially when all of these issues have been discussed before one year ago today. So James Summerton here is claiming that this was all covered before and it's just regurgitating old stuff, especially since there was nothing new brought up in this video. Bill Bold claims, bold claims. Um, and I believe that this was posted on December the 2nd. The original video was the 3rd of December. So it's kind of a sense of like, maybe he knew from, I did, this is alleged, I don't know, but maybe he knew from like a pre-release patron thing that like it's coming and he hadn't seen it. Judging by this post, it sounds like he hadn't seen the extent and just thought it was the same information. And um, he continues, if you have any concerns about these issues, please message me and I will answer all of your questions in detail. There is no direct message inbox big enough James um again I am so grateful for your support I love you all thank you and thank you that was his original post seemingly a day before the main release on on YouTube of H Bomber Guy's video now this was posted after on Sunday December the 3rd so this at the time of the screen grab was four hours ago but this subsequent the whole patron has been deleted which is a huge admission to me because patron is the the, the the way us creators can eat and keep our lights on and so to delete that income is to me a huge admission um you will not will not john gover says goddess cat is huzzah thank you i'm so glad you like them um i should have put a, a, a stamp paywall behind them but no i love you all you get this for free and i'm jingling for you for free so this was the comment that he then left 
and um i mean it's cute look at the difference in tone of what i just said hi everyone i wanted to say that i'm very sorry i'm in a terrible headspace right now so i don't want to post anything too long because i don't know where my brain will lead me but i will say something more extensive once i've prepared myself emotionally side note from me that's yet to be seen um and would be impossible on this platform because he deleted his whole account so yeah i know people want an immediate detailed response but i've never found immediate responses to anything to be as fair and honest as they could could be always more driven always more driven more by emotion than anything else now when all of his claims are against his ability to write you really want to be able to kind of be literate in this comment i'm just saying but hey he found that as well always more driven more by emotion than anything else i will say more soon though um but for now i want to apologize i'm heartbroken and i've lost your trust uh, that i've lost your trust and just hope that someday with a lot of work i can get it back so the tone shift to oh it's all the same stuff as it was a year ago like just dm me if you have a problem to i'm so sorry this is terrible i apologize is is neck break and this bear in mind time wise was the difference between the video being pre-released or not released or something to released so he clearly watched it he realized the jig is up james and that now 7.5 million people have seen how much you are a liar and a thief and a plagiarist and immoral now i will say at this point and this this is the truth of my opinion is that however bad things get for you james for some reason if you see this i doubt you will but anyone in general i think we should all echo that no one wishes james harm in any of this and i and i think that like i imagine being in his position how bad that must feel you've thrown away years of work of your career of your life you've got the internet against you i echo and i hope that i have at least my chat in agreement here that we wish him no harm good mental health to the extent that is possible in these terrible times for him and that he doesn't do anything silly or bad or, and I really mean that as much as the internet will now hate you because you did do things wrong you were immoral you were a thief and you were you were the exact thing you claimed that the internet should be better about and we'll talk about that later but that doesn't mean that you should do anything silly let me just say that right now so looking at then reddit okay this is a screenshot that we have from posted by uh hairy underscore confident underscore 743 um on the h bomber guy reddit i recommend checking out if you want to see more of the details he's also deleted his twitter and then when i was following this he deleted that pretty much straight away after um which was t uh now let's look at social blade so it's a thing i've only just found recently and i actually like found it because of a link to my own account and i was like oh like oh look at me just on here oh. um this is james summerton's social blade account um which marks if any of you don't know social blade marks uh channels growth or view subscription situation and everything so this is the aftermath of H Bomber Guy's takedown. Okay, the channel originally had three hundred and thirty-seven thousand subscribers, twenty-two, nearly twenty-three million views on the first of December. So you know those memes when you you go to sleep at Halloween, you wake up at Christmas. James Summerton thought he was waking up to uh, nearly three hundred and fifty thousand subscribers, nearly twenty-three million views. He was mistaken so let's look at the, the the subscription drop so initially when the video drop uh, like landed we saw a drop of a thousand subscribers then the next day me included in this twenty six thousand, we saw him lose twenty six thousand subscribers and now here we can see a decrease in viewership now the only way you would have that is if a video is deleted okay because um that's how it would kind of monitor the uh, 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 like you have less like you have fewer views like how could you do that unless you delete a video you can't unview something so he clearly deleted a video here in some form he lost another twenty thousand subs another eleven thousand subs and this is the thing that i wanted to talk about here so we can see from his channel 
that there are no videos here, okay? So what that must have meant is that on the 5th of December, I mean, allegedly, like with, with this information, I think it's clear to say, 3.3 million views worth of stuff he deleted. Which, I mean, all I'm trying to get at here is that, like, how much more of an admission of guilt can you have? Because if there was any single video that you made yourself and you were like, no, I own this, wouldn't you keep that at least that one for your own sake? And be like, look, okay, I put my hands up. I lied about all of these things. These are the ones I did myself. I'm going to leave this channel here and then I'm going to disappear from the internet. Like, but um, I also wanted to show here about the kind of the rise of James Summerton's um, channel. And I think, I think I can find it if we go back far enough. Um, I had it before. Yeah, here we go. So this isn't the first time. I wonder if we can go. Uh, yeah, here we go. So way back in 2021. Okay, so month of April 2021. James Summerton was at about 36,000, 40,000, 50,000 subscribers. Okay, and was going up about 10 a month. And it was at that time from April to May 2021 that he really jumped up. As we can see here from this bump, he went from 51,100 subscribers to 82,300 subscribers and then has continued on a, a quite heavy gradual up since then. Um, and so, uh, you know, as an, as an early channel myself, like it, it's really good to see the statistics behind this. But um, it's also apparent. Yeah, so in the month of December 2022, to January 2023, so a year ago, he also seems to have deleted another video then as well. So again, it's just clear that like th this is just something is up. Anyway, moving on, swiftly on. Now, other creators have come out of the pipeline to explain um, to themselves about what has happened and to to talk about their own experience with having found out that they've been plagiarized. And apologies for it not fitting in. But um, I've seen a few of, of this creator's stuff. Uh, Rowan Ellis, um, amazing content, does a lot of like LGBTQ plus media analysis, like book analysis and media analysis. So I haven't watched this in full, but this is a, t a TikTok that they released talking about how this was brought to light and further plagiarism was made, uh, like they were made aware of, which I think is really interesting because like we don't even know the extent of what happened. And it gets, if, if anyone is new to what's happened, James Summerton has been stealing queer creators' work, literally reading it out word for word, article after article, um, and just completely stealing it. And then claiming to be an advocate and voice for the queer community. Like, it's, it's absolutely insane. Uh, but yeah, let's watch this. So H Palmer Guy uploaded a four hour video essay yesterday, I think, on YouTube and plagiarism. And it turns out I might be one of the people who was plagiarized. My name's Rowan, I make video essays on YouTube, specifically from like a queer lens, um, often around history, sociology, um, pop culture, representation, things like that. So it turns out just prime real estate for James Summerton, who is the person who's being investigated within this video. I'm about halfway through H Bomber Guy's video. I didn't intend to start watching it until tonight. I didn't necessarily think it was that urgent, but I was like, oh cool, something to watch in the evening. But people kept telling me to watch it. And then uh, his producer, I think, put a link to a Reddit thread where they were essentially collating like queer YouTubers that people wanted to recommend as well as any other people that people wanted to flag as like potentially having been plagiarized by this guy. And so I obviously clicked on that link like, oh, I'm really excited to find other like queer creators. I want to see if there's anyone that I haven't heard of before because that's like what I love to watch. And then I scrolled down and plot twist, uh, there were people basically being like, hey, so um, it's not talked about within this like four hour video essay, but uh, Rowan Ellis has been plagiarized by this guy. Cool. Someone else messaged me with a screenshot to a series of tweets from a few years ago where a viewer was just like, it's so wild, this seems to be plagiarized, like this video between these two creators, because I've not been tagged in it, so I never like saw it. The th just jumping in as well, imagine that being how you found out. Imagine that being about how you found out that your hard work has been just stolen by someone who claims to be a pro-queer advocate, like it's it's so insidious, it's so terrible. The thing is, I very deliberately don't watch videos um, about topics that I either have already talked about or I uh, will talk about potentially in the future in video essays. One, because I don't want to even accidentally be like influenced by other people's like videos and thoughts. Um, but also uh, because I 
uh, have uh, just chronic self-doubt uh, and feel like if I ever gave in to watching these videos, I would be like, well, they did it better. Jack, back to the drawing board, lads. Um, so I have never watched any of these videos from this creator, so I don't entirely know like how it was plagiarized, if it was, like to what extent, but I'm now watching H Bomber Guy's video, I'm a few hours in, and oh boy, the amount of blatant plagiarism from this guy is completely wild to me. Um, so yeah, very strange Monday that I'm having. Just to say, um, definitely go seek out that Reddit thread, have a look at some of the amazing queer creators who are on there that people are recommending, who are doing great stuff. I know that Alex, who I absolutely adore, and I just recorded some like quote audio for, for an upcoming video about Taylor Swift, which looks amazing. Um, he is someone who seems to be uh, cited quite a lot within H Bomber Guy's videos, having had his stuff plagiarized extensively. Um, if you haven't checked out his channel, I'll highlight that in particular now. Go and do it. It's amazing. It used to be Are They Gay, which alone was incredible, has now pivoted to like longer form, more expansive video essays, which are stunning. So yeah, I guess support queer creators who don't plagiarize. Oh, we're going to get to that, honey. Yes, um, definitely check them out as well. I'll try and make sure I've put links into everyone that I talk about in the video. Um, so we're going to talk about the effects of what it feels like to be a queer creator, creator, creator in this space. But so just briefly looking at the um, the thread that uh, Rowan was just mentioning. So in the H Bomber Guy Reddit, we had this thread that was put up. Okay, so in the initial video, uh, H Bomber Guy talks about this playlist, um, which we will we can quickly check out now because. It also does comment on this, yeah, creator, Alexander Avila. Check them out if you can. No. Yes. Who also the kind of are you gay videos are down at the bottom of this playlist. But check this one out here. Um and so in the uh in the subreddit, um, it's basically in a, the producer cat gives a massive long list of like uh queer creators uh, that we should check out and other examples of plagiarism. So this was amazing and uh, I uh, already also commented something that I really wanted to say to H Bomber Guy because to get into this, okay. Um, obviously as well, check out this video for all of the other amazing creators that are. It's really affirming to see this list of creators and know a lot of them as well. Like K uh, Khadija M. Bao is one of the reasons I'm here. Uh, Maggie Mae Fish I know as well. Kat Blanken, again, huge, huge creator. OG leftist YouTuber. Lily Alexandra, I've used a lot of their, um, her videos in my, like, citations and stuff cj the x is so entertaining so high paced and high octane amazing energy in the videos mia Mulder, beautiful amazing uh very uh common slow pace leftist youtube uh, trans creators i love so there's loads to check out there's loads even i don't know some of them i'm gonna do amazing um and more on the reddit page okay i will say one thing to h bomber guy from me a very small leftist queer creator okay i'm a trans woman so if you know that's me uh happily married to a wonderful guy who is the man of my dreams as a creator on youtube who in a year's time has accumulated just under three thousand subscribers i have had insane amounts of just like that other uh, tiktok we watched a feeling that i am not good enough a feeling that me p just being creative and having a, a personality like I do is not enough to get anywhere on YouTube. And that there are these greats, these are all-time amazing creators that will always be better than me. And hundreds of other people at my, you know, that, that are trying to be uh, more popular at my level that I'll never be. One thing this video did for me, I mean explicitly H Bomber Guy talks about this. He says, Never ever take for granted your creativity. Because there are people out there that physically cannot produce and create like you do as a creator. They would rather steal and lie and cheat their way to the top than actually create. A lot of people have said, Illuminati, James Summerton, it looks like more effort to steal to the extent they've done and cover their tracks and continue the lie than to actually create from scratch. 
I mean, I agree. I script all of my own video essays. I create everything. I put compile this stuff together and it's, it's, it's work. But looking at plagiarizing all of those things and, and, and rewriting everything slightly and trying to cover your tracks constantly, like that's more work. So why would someone choose to do more work? Because they don't have the ability to create themselves. And that, as a very small queer creator, is a huge, huge, huge smack of confidence <laughs> over my face and my channel. And I'm proud to say I make everything myself. I, I quote a lot of things and I use a lot of things as references. And I am gonna be I'm gonna be very uh, strict to myself with citations and make sure everything is in place. But to know that my innate creativity, the jokes I make, the connections I make to things, the the set design that I put together, the script, the puns, the the flow is something that I'm making, and that's why people are here. It gives me confidence as a queer creator that I can continue. And there are times when I haven't got money to help my husband fund our household. There are times when I think to myself, should I go back to being a translator and making decent money? There are times when I think to myself, am I going to be anywhere? Am I going to get anywhere? Am I worth this? I could just be stuck like this forever and never really get success. But this video, I cannot explain enough how much it gave me confidence that I am, I am, I am something. I'm worth something. I should keep continuing. Me and all of the other queer creators out there that have something to say and some tiny corner of YouTube should be for us. This video gave me that confidence. And we will get there and we will grow and we won't have to steal and lie to do so. And I think that another thing is that like a lot of people think that we're competing against each other for the spotlight. But I disagree that that has to be the way. I think YouTube is like it, an economy in itself is that left tube and socialist youtube and queer spaces and that can grow we can have more people included we can include more to that space and so there's no need to feel like it's a competition between creators when you're you're gonna get new eyes on you all the time so anyway i'm glad i got that out in a succinct manner and uh, that was kind of my main point and i guess to have that at the end makes sense so i'm gonna round it off there but um, honestly, if in some bizarre way, H Bomber Guy, if you see this, thank you for what you've done for the small voice in the queer community. I can't thank you enough. Um, and I will remember this when I lack in confidence. You've given me the pre-armed, um, you know, ability to carry on. And I hope one day, I can do as good to the world as you have done. And to James Summerton, if for some bizarre reason you're still online and you see this, I wish you'd take care of yourself. You will move past this. Don't do anything silly. Take care of yourself, and I mean that. But my advice would be to apologize to everyone you've done wrong, return the money that you've stolen, and personally apologize and give credit to every single creator you have plagiarized from and then remove yourself from the internet just don't insult anyone with a ukulele apology and trying to reclaim what you once had never again and that's my that's my honest opinion and advice take care of yourself eat your vegetables sleep well but like don't try and be back in this space. Fool me once, that kind of thing. Thank you so much for sticking around. I hope that it was worth me spilling the tea or the coffee uh, at the end for the goddess section this week. I really think this was a very big cultural moment. Good for h my guy for putting such an amazing video together. Um, but yeah, the last, the tea, sits. so many creators involved. As uh, Robert just said in the chat, yeah, it's, it's unthinkable. Like, it was a real... It was wild. Like, if you haven't watched it already, obviously watch the H Bomber Guy video. It's really worth the four hours. Even if you watch like an hour a night, it's, um, it, it really is a sign of the time. And I did a video essay that I released a bit earlier than scheduled to come straight after about platform responsibility, which is a very similar conversation. And it talks about like 
it's just not okay that people can use their platform for to just lie and just cause harm cause bomb threats on people you know cause people to you know go through any form of harm just because of a lie they're falsifying and i talk about livers of tiktok uh sniper wolf but obviously this comes into similar brackets so if you haven't watched my like um latest video essay please do watch that next if you want something else to watch we're finishing a bit early today so if you if you if you're like oh i need a bit more of a matriarchal type fix then i encourage you to go and to watch that so yeah thank you again for an amazing time hope you stay safe and stay positive in these tricky tricky times we live in we've had a huge number of new members thank you so much to everyone that's joined um dietrich thank you for gifting 10 memberships i think it was so you will all watch this um first you get early access to all my stuff i do a whole bunch of bonus content for members only as well as uh monthly members only live streams which we're, we are beginning and this, we're kicking that off with the end of year um members only live stream which we're going to do like a quiz it's gonna be great we're gonna round up the year nicely so love you lots take care of yourselves and be safe Mwah. thanks again bye everyone i love you